Good evening everybody or whatever time it is where you are tonight we are gonna change some guitar strings because I have a lesson tomorrow and my strings are completely dead um, and I thought I would kind of show you guys how I change guitar strings slash just kind of hang out and have some guitar talk so I'm gonna just start by taking these strings off um, like I said tomorrow I have a lesson and probably not ideal to change your strings right before your guitar lesson or the day before or the night before but uh Hopefully I'll change these tonight, maybe practice on them a little bit, and then let them kind of stretch out overnight, and then they'll be fine, hopefully in the morning. But uh, yeah, I have my guitar lesson tomorrow at 9 a.m., unfortunately. It's not the, for me, it's not the best time to, to play guitar, but uh, it is what it is. I just don't have that much time to like warm up or practice beforehand. I mean, I can if I wake up early, but then you gotta wake up early. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Really, I wanna start waking up earlier. The hard part for me is just going to bed early. Um, it's just like not in the lifestyle of Spain to sleep early. It's just not, like people don't eat dinner till like 9 p.m. And then like, you don't get ready and go to bed after that, it's like, the night is like super young and life is just starting basically but uh yeah once i get these strings off and put them on i'll kind of show you how i do strings i feel like it's a little different than how other people do it but something that i learned from parkening when i studied with him and uh i think it works it works pretty good and it gets your strings on a, a little bit faster i think than maybe some other methods so we'll talk about that in in a little bit um, the strings we're working with are the Augustine Regal, yeah, Augustine Regal, high tension, of course. I always play high tension, it's kind of my default tension that I play with. Um, I feel like a lot of people are either high tension or, or medium tension. Um, but I like high tension just because I like to push a little bit more into it. But it depends on your guitar, it depends on the action. All that good stuff but uh yeah i do not like changing strings i'll tell you that as a guitarist it's not one of my favorite things to do i feel like it messes up my nails i have to do my nails if i want to play again and uh i hate playing the guitar if there's like any inconsistency in my nail um and it's not because i mean the reason for that is in my opinion, when you play the nylon strings of guitar, you can put like these micro scratches in the string and the more you play with the nail that's not nicely filed, the more like micro scratches, I think, go into the string and then the string doesn't last as long, your tone starts to suffer from it. Uh, and what I mean by that is like the, the string kind of gets a scratchy sound on it. Um, Kind of like a shh, shh sound as your finger goes across the string. Um, and so if my nails aren't filed like perfectly, then I don't like to play the guitar. Um, these strings are really not that old. They're like less than a month old. But you hear this. I put it closer to the microphone. I don't know if you can hear that at all. But you can hear this kind of shh, shh, shh. So, that's what I, I call micro scratches. I've honestly never heard anybody really talk about that before. It's kind of just a Cody thing, I think. I don't know. But it's something that I <coughs> think about. Or like something that I'm like, I'm almost protective about it sometimes. Like if I just put on brand new strings and somebody's like, can I play your guitar? Can I try it? I'm like, yes, of course you can try it. But like, are your nails like filed well? Because I just put on brand new strings. And if your finger the nails aren't like, well filed you're gonna scratch the strings and like I don't know that probably sounds super like I don't know lame but it's a thing for me it's a thing anyways so like I said we're working with the Augustine strings I used to play um, Diodario Pro Art the, like were my default strings for the longest time and then I tried the Augustine and on my guitar, at least my previous guitar, I thought they, they sounded better. They're a little more, the Augustine strings are a little more brilliant, I think, 
slightly brighter, but not necessarily brighter. I feel like the string in general, like the string is just a little thicker. Uh, and I don't know, just the brilliance is more, I feel like compared to the Deuterio, the strings are like softer. So you get more of like a, you get more of a creamy tone, if that makes sense. Um, but you don't get that kind of extra brightness and umph, especially if you're like a, a darker player. I feel like I'm a little more on the dark side with my tone. <laughs> that's why I'm on the dark side with my tone. And so having a string that's a little bit brighter, I feel like is, is helpful for me, but it depends. I know people who play Diodario and sound amazing. So, okay, let's start with the six string, get this guy tied on. And then I think I might change up the angle so you guys can see how I string it on. But let me know what kind of strings you guys use, what kind of strings you like. Everybody always says good things about Hannah Box strings. I don't think I've really given them a shot or tried them. Maybe I've tried them once. Actually, I think when I, I think when I first ex got this guitar, not like bought it, when I first got it uh, to play for the scholarship, I think it had Hannah Box strings on. But when I get a new guitar, I typically like to start with strings that I know. Because I feel like if I'm playing a new instrument with strings that I don't know, I just don't have like a, a baseline to start with. So I changed the strings, so I didn't really, get to, hello, get to try the Hannah Block strings. So we put this through here, and now we are going to change the camera angles. We're going to cut to that. Okay, so here we are. We've looped the string, or put the string through the hole, and then what I like to do is this right here, is you put some twists in the string, about five twists for the bass strings, more or less. And what this does is that it creates this kind of twisted string that you see here. And I kind of cinch it up like this, and then I twist the tuning machine. So that as this tightens, all these little loops here they kind of become like, I don't know, little teeth that I feel like can kind of bite uh, around the tuning peg and kind of just grip onto each other so that you don't have to sit there and wrap the string around a million times until the string stays, you know what I mean? Um, so I do this and then essentially it's done, that's it. So you don't have to twist like crazy. Um, Nowadays you can also buy just like one of those electronic tuner things, or you can get like the crank kind of old school thing. Um, but there we have it, there's our string. So that's on. Let's do the fifth string now. Yeah, I'm curious. What kind of strings do you guys like and why do you like them? That's what I want to know. I also need, oops, did I get that the wrong way? Yes. Wrong way. It doesn't really matter which way but you do this. I just like all of my strings to be pointing the same way. So it's like. Not that big of a deal, but I just like them to be kind of symmetrical, essentially. So we thread the needle like so, and then we put our twists in. Oh my gosh, my guitar almost just fell off this couch. That, imagine, imagine I would be crying right now. It's also got this cool headstock, which I like. I think, I don't know, it's okay. It's got this cool thing. This thing kind of looks like, like a devil head. <laughs> it's upside down for you guys right now, but, or, or like a goat's head, you know? Which 
depending on, you know, if you like that, could be cool. I don't know if I like that or not, but uh, regardless, it's cool that it has the little inlay there. I always like to try to put the wound part of the string on the side that's gonna have more tension. So in other words, like this one, the string is on this side because it wants to pull this way, it wants to pull this way. And so it tightens up on itself naturally, keeping it hopefully more in tune. At least that's my thought process. Boom, that one's done. Let's get our fourth string here. And then we got all the bases done. Okay, we're back here. Back to the other angle. You guys saw how that worked. Also, let me know again about video ideas. Um, I've gotten so many comments about video ideas for this and that, and a lot of them have been on the shorts that I've been making. And I read them and I'm like, that's a fantastic idea. Like, I'm gonna make a video about that. And then the comments easily get lost in all the sea of comments. Um, so if you have a video idea that you wanna see uh, that I haven't done, leave a comment. And if I don't do it, leave another comment. And if I still don't do it, leave another comment because the more fresh it is in my mind, the more likely I'll be to do it. And sometimes, like I said, the comments can get a little bit lost. Um, and if you comment on a video, there's a better chance of me seeing it because my videos don't get as many comments as the, the shorts. So leave a comment, let me know if you have questions about anything. If there's any guitar techniques that you wanna look at. I think someone might've mentioned tremolo to me a while back, so we could maybe do that. But my tremolo is a little bit not normal now. It used to be normal, I used to play normal three finger tremolo um, or like three fingers with AMI and I did that for a long time and it, and it was great and like I feel like I always felt like I had pretty good tremolo and then I don't know what happened in my life or with me or what but then I feel like all of a sudden my tremolo just like was is terrible like now I, I almost to be honest I almost avoid tremolo a little bit and I don't know what happened to me but what I do now is I don't play it with AMI. I changed it to I am no M I M like uh, like Anna Vitovich, um, and I think it works quite well. Beautiful. I don't have perfect pitch. I'm guessing this is an E. Sounds right. Let's see how close I am to A though. One sec. I'm gonna get my tuning fork and let's see if I'm close to A. Okay, so A. Oops. I have no idea. I do not have perfect pitch, but let's see. If you ever handy any tuning fork, which you should use a tuning fork. If you don't, you should get one. If you don't, I will leave a description. I'll leave a link in the description for this because you should always have a tuning fork on hand. Here we go. A. Oh, I'm second guessing myself now. Let's see. <laughs> Yo, that's pretty close. That was actually closer than I thought. Okay, my ear doesn't suck. Nice. Okay, let's put the treble strings on and let's be done with this process because, again, I'm not a fan of it. And I got things to do, places to be, things to practice, videos to edit, things to upload. You know how it is. I have a lesson tomorrow and I'm, uh, I'm not ready for my lesson, which I hate. I don't like that. And I need to practice. Tomorrow I'm gonna play a 
piece by Andrew York for my professor. And basically, we're going to see if he likes it or not. Um, I don't think he's a huge fan like me. So, oh shoot. Okay, when you get your tuning fork, be careful your guitar does not hit it like that. Because that's not good. Anyways, I'm playing Sirocco by Andrew York tomorrow. Haven't played that piece since last April, and then in my last lesson, my teacher, we were talking about playing that piece in a program, and he's like, oh, I'm not too familiar with this piece. Play it for me next week. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Haven't played it in a long time. And it's, it's, a, it's a hard piece. I think it's what Andrew York, like, it's like, for, and, for Andrew York, yeah, I would say it's, it's definitely one of his more difficult pieces, for sure. Um, and so I need to play it tomorrow, but I need to play it. I need to play it well because I feel like it's I feel like it's a test basically and I'm like if I play it well There's a chance my teacher will like it and there's a chance I can play it in my program If I don't play it well, then I don't know Maybe he won't like it and then there's a chance that maybe I won't end up playing it in my program. So Yeah, we'll see That piece though has um, tremolo in it and it's five finger tremolo instead of just five finger meaning there's there's five uh, five beats per tremolo or five strokes per beat is what I should say uh, and typically that's like a common flamenco tremolo so it's like P I A M I P I A M I like that but I think I think I changed it when I was working on that piece because I was having trouble with my A finger. And so I do a five finger tremolo, but with three fingers. So I go P M I M I P M I M I one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, like that. Um, which is also, I feel like not normal, but that's how I do it. And I find that it works. Oh shoot. I think I just put the wrong string on. That's a bummer, yeah. So you know how I was mentioning at the beginning of the video that uh, the Augustine, Augustine strings are a little bit thicker? I just proved my point because I just put the second string on where the, th yeah, I put the second string on where the third string should go because I thought it was a third string because it's thick. This is, but this one's much thicker. That is unfortunate because I don't want to have to change this again. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, this this really feels like a like a third string. If you didn't know any better, you would say to yourself, "That's a third string." But then when I picked the other string up, I was like, "Whoa, that one is way thicker." It also helps too if you just look at the look at the package and uh, know what you're doing. But it's okay. We did it like this, so it goes on easy and it comes off easy. There we go. So you are the second string. Also, Augustine, all their strings have this like purple, blue thing, blue tip. I don't know how well you can see that if my camera will focus on it. It'd be too small, but yeah, this is like a dark blue purple. And I always like to put that on the end so that it, like the string changes colors. Yeah, I know it's kind of weird, but that's what I like to do. So I always put the, the colored end on this side so you can see a little bit of color on it. Okay, this is our third string. It's a shame we had to make that mistake, but that's okay. Sometimes it'd be like that. Anyways, Andrew York, Sirocco, if you guys know that piece, let me know, because I don't know a lot of people who know that piece. Actually, I know nobody who knows that piece, other than a few people that I've seen play it on YouTube. Um, but if you do know Andrew York, what's your favorite Andrew York piece? Because I'm a big fan, big York fan. I mean, who isn't, right? His music's awesome. His music's really, really enjoyable to play. I, for me personally, find it, at least at this point in my life,
probably some of the most enjoyable music to play on guitar. I feel like he's good at capturing feelings, but like in a way that comes across as translated in today's more modern language, if that makes sense. Because obviously like, I guess you could say all music is feelings, right? Translates something. But the style with which he does it, I feel like is very understandable to the lay person, if that makes sense, and to a seasoned musician too. Um, so that's one reason why I really like to play his music. Where did my second string go now? Oh, there it is. Wait a minute. Oh, here it is, okay. I was like, I think I just lost my string in my old strings and that would not be cool. Okay, second string, first string, we're done. We practice. Um, yeah. I hope if you guys have to change strings, you can watch this video with me and we can like change strings together. It'd be kind of fun, you know? I also, okay, that was really bad. Sometimes I like to put an extra twist on the higher strings. Like I'll put three twists instead of two, just to make sure that it doesn't loosen. Sometimes. But that's me. So for the treble strings, I would say anywhere from five to seven twists. You need a little bit more because the strings are thinner. Unlike the bass strings, you only need about five. Even you could probably get away with less than that. And I do this just to kind of like cinch it up. But yeah, if you guys ever have to change guitar strings, put this video on and uh, change strings with me. You know, sometimes when I change strings, if I'm not recording, I guess I could have done this now too, is uh, I like to watch something while I change strings. It's kind of also fun. Can be guitar videos, can be non-guitar videos. It's kind of just like something to like, I don't know, multitask, I guess. You're like kind of watching something while you're also being productive, which is kind of fun. Okay. First string, we're almost done with this process. Let's put three in this one. Three twists, cinch it up. Look at that. They're all pointing in the same direction. They all look nice. Okay. Last bit here. If you guys are still watching the video at this point, thank you leave me a comment saying that you're still watching at this point because if you are i appreciate you and if you are also comment what you want to see me do next i have a i have a lot of ideas um I'm thinking about making some more guitar covers of songs although sometimes when i make guitar covers like i feel like they don't do so well I don't know, maybe I'm just not, I don't know. But if you guys want to see a guitar cover, let me know. Tutorial, let me know. Just let me know, you know? Okay, we got the last string on. I'm just gonna get her tuned up, but it's nothing that you guys really need to listen to. All right, thanks for watching this video, guys. Leave a comment, subscribe, like. I appreciate you, I appreciate you a lot. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one.